Uh, Peter, good to have you back with us. Thanks for having me on, and Happy New Year to you and, and your audience. And, you know, I agree with you. The economy is going to blow up, but, you know, it's going to blow up like a bomb. It's not <laughs> a good thing. It's a, it's a bad thing. You know, unfortunately, that's what uh, Trump has inherited uh, from Obama. But it's not even really just Obama. It's the Federal Reserve. It's the monetary policy that has been passed like a baton from Clinton uh, to Bush to Obama and now to Trump. And we're near the end of the game. And unfortunately, uh, Trump's going to be the fall guy. This thing is all going to collapse while he's president. And he owns the stock market bubble. He and the Republicans own the economy now, thanks to these tax cuts. They're not going to make any difference, but they are going to give the Democrats a reason to blame it all on Trump and the Republicans. But we are getting closer uh, to this collapse. You mentioned GDP growth. Last year, the economy, the way they measure a GDP, will probably end up being a little bit above 2.5% for the year, which is about the same as we were getting, uh, you know, a little bit better maybe than the average of the last four years under Obama. Uh, but there were years that Obama had higher than that. But the important thing is if you look at what's happening in the dollar, for example, last year was the first year in five years that the dollar went down and it was the biggest decline in 14 years. We had the biggest drop against the Chinese Yuan in nine years. And in fact, I think this year we're going to fall to an all-time record low against the yuan. I think we're going to hit record lows against other major currencies like the euro and the yen, maybe by 2019 or 2020. Look at the bond market. We're at about a four-year high now in 10-year tre in, in treasuries. But bond prices are rising. Look at oil. Oil's now back at $63, $64 a barrel. We've had a huge increase, but we're just getting started. Gold is on the verge of breaking out. Hasn't really done it yet. We're still trading around 1340. But what's happening is inflation is rearing its ugly head in a, in a big way. And, and, and this is going to help push up interest rates. And what Trump has done or the Republicans with these tax cuts, they're not going to help the economy because the economy has so many other headwinds that, it, that are going to hit it. But they are going to push up the deficit. The budget deficits are going to soar. The trade deficits are at record highs. They're going to soar. These rising twin deficits increasing interest rates is reminiscent of 1987 before the market crash. But the problem is we are more dependent now than we ever have been. The Federal Reserve made the mistake of creating a huge bubble economy that completely depends on extremely low interest rates to survive. Peter, well, let's come back to that away. in a moment. Let's come back to the moment. I, I agree with you on the fundamentals and you predicted a lot of things accurately before, but, but this is what I'm getting at. What was Trump supposed to do when they already had it planned to go down, uh, admittedly, when Hillary got in and, and kind of organize our collapse and use that for social control, what is Trump supposed to do when he's trying to end globalist control, end TPP, stabilize the border, uh, get people believing in humanity again, doing a lot of really good positive things to return sovereignty? He's using a bubble against their bubble, and I see a lot of these policies actually deploying money back to the people, the oh, average geez. family, $13,000, uh, vet... Yeah. It, Alex, this is going to backfire. He's he's like the Jimmy Carter in reverse. I think we're going to have an extremely liberal president, either a Bernie Sanders or someone like him in 2020. Uh, what Trump should have done is leveled with the American people like he kind of did when he was a candidate. He talked about how bad things were, but he didn't really say what needed to be done to fix it. But at least he said we have a bubble in the stock market. You know, the economy is a mess. I mean, all that was true. And that's why he got elected. But after he got elected, he became a cheerleader for the very economy that he correctly criticized. And now he has set everybody up. He has raised everybody's expectations so high that when everything comes crashing down, not only will he get blamed, but everyone's going to be disappointed. What he should have done the moment he was sworn in is he should have leveled with everybody and said, you know what? This is a disaster. It is a mess. I am going to fix this, but it's not going to be fun. The medicine that we're going to swallow right now is not going to taste But here's good, the, here's the problem. He work. knows the people were already demoralized by the globalists, by Obama, and all this other crud. And, you, you, you know, you're saying, oh, the economy's not really growing any faster, you know, than on Obama. Well, it does show 3.3%, and everybody I know is seeing a difference. Record low black unemployment. I mean, I think exuberance can bring us out of this and, and break the back of the globalist. And, and, and show that they were the ones suppressing things, and then we can reorganize things. I agree, you're absolutely right about the Federal Reserve and, and, and all of it, but man, if he came in here and tanked the stock market with a reset like you're talking about, they'd really be able to impeach his butt. No, he campaigned and said it was a bubble. 
It wasn't his bubble. Now it's his bubble. That's the problem. But if he would have said it's a bubble and it's going down, it wouldn't have been his fault because part of the cure for the economy is deflating these bubbles. It has to be done. Someone has to rip this Band-Aid off. And he was elected. To well, do isn't, he he was elected to a, isn't he doing that with a isn't he doing that getting rid of the write off for state income tax and for property no. tax? No, he's not coming close to doing that. These are gimmicky tax cuts that run up the deficit. They are not real tax cuts because we're not having cuts in government spending. You said we have record low black unemployment. Black unemployment was falling under Obama, too, because blacks were leaving the labor force. And that hasn't changed. You have record low labor force participation rate. Hardly any blacks are working, I mean, percentage wise. So that's why they're not unemployed. Look how many are in prison. So this this is not some kind now, of Now, wait a minute. Black unemployment almost doubled under Obama. The, the, the unemployment rate doubled for everybody at the beginning because, you know, and then it all then it started to come down. But the reason it came down was because so many people left the labor force and so many people accepted crappy, low paying part time jobs. And that is what's going on. That hasn't changed under Trump. All right. In well, fact, listen, anybody accuses me of being as a cheerleader for the economy. This is a, this is the balancing of it out. I hope Peter Schiff's wrong. He's a smart guy. What's going to happen then? How will the implosion look? I mean, let's war game that when we come back. All right, Peter Schiff is our guest. He's made a lot of accurate predictions over the years. But I want to positively say he's made some that didn't come true. Uh, I, I totally agree with what he's saying about a big bubble and, you know, the stock market mainly helping really wealthy people, except it makes them bring new jobs here, uh, hire more folks, raise wages. We are seeing thousands of companies come back. I think we're seeing some positive things. But he's basically up here saying that there's a giant bubble uh, well, you just heard him earlier, if you were tuned in, that Trump's helped pump it up now and that he's going to be the fall guy when it implodes discrediting capitalism and bringing in basically a communist. Uh, is that what you're getting at, Mr. Schiff? A, and then B, how will the bubble go down in different scenarios and how far will the market go down if your scenario is right? Because I'll be honest with you, it gets a little scary when the market's gaining 1,000 points in a week. I mean, that does kind of get me a little concerned. Yeah, you know, this is the same thing that happened under George W. Bush, right? He inherited a bubble. Instead of leveling with the American public, he pretended everything was great. And then uh, the bigger bubble that was inflated while he was president collapsed, except, except that he got a second term because the, his bubble didn't really pop until the end of his second term. I think Trump's is going to pop during his first term uh, because this one is much bigger and we don't have as much time. But here's how it's going to go down. Right? So what's going to happen is, Interest rates are going to keep rising. Commodity prices are going to keep rising. The dollar is going to keep falling. So you're going to start to see pickups uh, in the official inflation rate. And so rising consumer prices and rising interest rates are going to start to be a powerful headwind for the economy because Americans are going to be spending a lot more money on basic necessities on their if they have an adjustable rate mortgage. Uh, it, costs are going up. Credit card debt, auto loans, all this cheap money is going to be gradually going away. And the economy is going to be weakening. And as the economy is weakening, unemployment is going to start to pick up. Now, the Fed's going to see this. The Fed's going to see the economy slowing down. And if they continue to raise rates, it will go into recession. Now, that is better than the alternative. But the alternative, if the Federal Reserve decides that they want to prevent a recession or maybe fight off a recession, if, if it happens and they're, you know, they don't recognize it in time, if they want to prop up the stock market, then what they have to do is call off the rate hikes. In fact, I think they have to go back to zero. They have to launch QE4 in order to keep interest rates from really spiking and to prop up the market. But that will set off a currency crisis. The dollar will plunge, not just make new lows, but destroy the old lows. And that will set off an economic crisis that's far worse than the financial crisis or the recession. That's okay, well, let me throw this at you then. Uh, they say China, some numbers, five, six, seven, eight times the amount of state-sponsored pumping money into it. They execute you if you criticize the markets over there. Uh, China is going to lower their taxes to basically zero to incentivize companies to stay. How can China's bubble just continue to, to go up and up and up and up and up when they've got all their problems? Uh, and then you're saying that our bubble isn't going to work. I mean, I, you know, I really hope you're wrong because you know, they've got news articles out there you know, where they call the stock market and say, wow, why'd the market jump? Well, Jones came out and said, Comey admitted, you know, Trump not under criminal investigation. Well, he really did say that. But, I mean, I know this show actually affects markets, and, and I get it's all a house of cards, but good Lord, man, if, if they've got house of cards that are much, much bigger and out of control over in China, I, I'm just, I, I don't like trying to pull the house of cards down.
Oh, well, you remember, China now has, you know, record trade surpluses. We have record deficits. The Chinese people save 30 percent of what they earn. We barely save 3 percent. Our savings rates at a 10 year low. The Chinese government doesn't really isn't in debt. They have assets. They got trillions and trillions of dollars of assets. We have liabilities. They're the biggest they owners of our security. debt, aren't they? They own our debt, but they own other debt. They, but they don't have Social Security. They don't have Medicare. They don't have all these unfunded liabilities the way, they, the way we do. Chinese rely on themselves. Americans rely on the government. We have got a much bigger bubble. They actually have a vibrant economy. Yes, there are problems in that economy, but a lot of it has to do with their misguided efforts to prop up the dollar so they can keep selling Americans products that we can't afford and that we'll never pay for. By the way, Peter, so I Peter, I'm not I, I, I'm not being critical of this because I think investors should invest wherever they like. I know you're Euro-Pacific capital. And I know you're all about investing all over the world, but are you betting on America having a downturn because you've got more foreign investments? I am, and actually, you know, a lot of our strategies have beaten the U.S. market over the last two years, despite the fact that it's gone up, and we're beating it again in a lot of strategies this year, because the dollar is so weak, that gives you a huge tailwind when now you're investing internationally. So for all the years the dollar was strengthening, uh, it was, you know, that was eating away at international returns. But the dollar is about to lose all of that strength, and then some. So now, if, you, if you're bullish on the stock market, there's no reason to be invested in the U.S. market. We're going to make so much more money, and we are making much more money in emerging markets, right, in commodities. But in your modeling, lower dollar brings back more manufacturing jobs. No, it doesn't. It's, the lower dollar is going to bring record high trade deficits because it's going to increase what we have to pay to import the Peter, things. Peter, i got to say, though, man, I, I think betting against America, I just, I just have a gut feeling that the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. I'm not betting against America. I'm betting against the socialists and the central bankers who have destroyed America. In the long run, maybe America is going to come back. But first, we're going to have to pay the piper. This is a gigantic bubble. Trump was right when he was a candidate. The air is coming out. No, I know. And Trump sounded like you as a candidate. And then they got mad at him saying, you know, the real estate's too high. All this stuff hurts average families. You're right. But I'm just saying... Being right intellectually is is good. But, I mean, you're a successful, wealthy guy. The average family and hardworking people that are working two, three jobs, a collapse is going to, at least in the short term, hurt them bad. No, but it's going to happen now anyway. It's going to happen worse. When the dollar collapses, it wipes out the middle class. People are going to be impoverished, and they're going to blame Trump. You know, there are a lot of people who voted for Trump out of frustration. He promised a lot. He talked big. He is not going to deliver, and that is going to be used against him. And it's going to ultimately be used against the country. The, the country. Wait till you see how bad things get. You know, these tax cuts, they're all temporary. They're all going away in 2021. What do you think the Democrats are going to do when they have the White House and both houses of Congress? How high do you think they're going to jack taxes up on corporations? What do you think they're going to do to entrepreneurs? This is a disaster. We had a chance to defuse this. If Trump would have owned up to the problems of the economy, they weren't his fault. He could have blamed it all on his predecessor, and he could have finally put politics aside and done the right thing for this country. Instead, he acted just like all the other presidents who have just, you know, continued to kick the can down the road. Well, I don't think he acted like all of them on social issues, like marching with pro-life. Nobody's done that. Uh, the border uh, the veterans. I mean, he's he's really delivering on a lot of fronts. No, no. I'm talking about big cuts to government spending, dealing with entitlements, getting in and cutting Social Security and Medicare so we don't have massive... No, no, I agree. That's got to start. There's been some cutting. No, there hasn't been. The government spending is growing under Bush. It, I mean, under, under, under Trump. They're not cutting anything. They're increasing spending and they're reducing revenues to finance that spending. That means the government is going to rely on inflation and debt Sure. Finance, yeah, but bigger. models show these type of tax cuts a lot of times bring in higher tax receipts. They're not going to do that. They're, they never do that. They're not going to be the, the tax receipts won't be enough to cover the decline. But meanwhile, the economy is going to fall. Higher interest rates and higher per consumer prices, which are consequences. Well, Peter, of tax cuts, it, it, okay, are be a bigger drag on the economy. Than we got to have you back up soon then to really flesh this out. Wow, uh, man, I've. I feel like jumping off a cliff now. No, no, I won't. Seriously, I'll never commit suicide. Hillary, don't get me. I was just joking. All right, Peter Schiff. Uh, if he's right, it'll be a great time for investors to buy stuff up. And, like the communist Chinese, we'll be back. Uh, Peter, good to have you back with us. Thanks for having me on, and Happy New Year to you and, and your audience. And, you know, I agree with you. The economy is going to blow up, but, you know, it's going to blow up like a bomb. 
It's not a good <laughs> thing. It's a, it's a bad thing. You know, unfortunately, that's what uh, Trump has inherited uh, from Obama. But it's not even really just Obama. It's the Federal Reserve. It's the monetary policy that has been passed like a baton from Clinton uh, to Bush to Obama and now to Trump. And we're near the end of the game. And unfortunately, uh, Trump's going to be the fall guy. This thing is all going to collapse while he's president. And he owns the stock market bubble. He and the Republicans own the economy now, thanks to these tax cuts. They're not going to make any difference, but they are going to give the Democrats a reason to blame it all on Trump and the Republicans. But we are getting closer uh, to this collapse. You mentioned GDP growth. Last year, the economy, the way they measure a GDP, will probably end up being a little bit above 2.5% for the year, which is about the same as we were getting, uh, you know, a little bit better maybe than the average of the last four years under Obama. Uh, but there were years that Obama had higher than that. But the important thing is if you look at what's happening in the dollar, for example, last year was the first year in five years that the dollar went down and it was the biggest decline in 14 years. We had the biggest drop against the Chinese Yuan in nine years. And in fact, I think this year we're going to fall to an all-time record low against the yuan. I think we're going to hit record lows against other major currencies like the euro and the yen, maybe by 2019 or 2020. Look at the bond market. We're at about a four-year high now in 10-year tre in, in treasuries. But bond prices are rising. Look at oil. Oil's now back at $63, $64 a barrel. We've had a huge increase, but we're just getting started. Gold is on the verge of breaking. Elected. But after he got elected, he became a cheerleader for the very economy that he correctly criticized. And now he has set everybody up. He has raised everybody's expectations so high that when everything comes crashing down, not only will he get blamed, but everyone's going to be disappointed. What he should have done the moment he was sworn in is he should have leveled with everybody and said, you know what? This is a disaster. It is a mess. I am going to fix this, but it's not going to be fun. The medicine that we're going to swallow right now is not going to taste good. But here's good, the, here's the problem. He work. knows the people were already demoralized by the globalists, by Obama, and all this other crud. And, you, you know, you're saying, oh, the economy's not really growing any faster, you know, than on Obama. Well, it does show 3.3%, and everybody I know is seeing a difference. Record low black unemployment. I mean, I think exuberance can bring us out of this and, and break the back of the globalist. And, and, and show that they were the ones suppressing out. Hasn't really done it yet. We're still trading around 1340. But what's happening is inflation is rearing its ugly head in a, in a big way. And, and, and this is going to help push up interest rates. And what Trump has done, or the Republicans with these tax cuts, they're not going to help the economy because the economy has so many other headwinds that, it, that are going to hit it. But they are going to push up the deficit. The budget deficits are going to soar. The trade deficits are at record highs. They're going to soar. These rising twin deficits, increasing interest rates is reminiscent of 1987 before the market crash. But the problem is we are more dependent now than we ever have been. The Federal Reserve made the mistake of creating a huge bubble economy that completely depends on extremely low interest rates to survive. Peter, well, let's come back to that away. in a moment. Let's come back to the moment. I, I agree with you on the fundamentals and you predicted a lot of things accurately before, but, but this is what I'm getting at. What was Trump supposed to do when they already had it planned to go down, uh, admittedly, when Hillary got in and, and kind of organize our collapse and use that for social control? What is Trump supposed to do when he's trying to end globalist control, end TPP, stabilize the border, uh, get people believing in humanity again, doing a lot of really good positive things to return sovereignty? He's using a bubble against their bubble, and I see a lot of these policies actually deploying money back to the people, the yeah, average family, $13,000, uh, vet... Yeah. It, Alex, this is going to backfire. He's he's like the Jimmy Carter in reverse. I think we're going to have an extremely liberal president, either a Bernie Sanders or someone like him in 2020. Uh, what Trump should have done is leveled with the American people like he kind of did when he was a candidate. He talked about how bad things were, but he didn't really say what needed to be done to fix it. But at least he said we have a bubble in the stock market. You know, the economy is a mess. I mean, all that was true. And that's why he got elected.